Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Cooking for the Family. I'm Devon and today I'm going to share with you how I make my sausage and cabbage. I'm also going to tell you all about my corn fritters that I make using Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. These are the ingredients that I'm going to be using for our sausage and cabbage. So I have a huge head of cabbage here. So I already know that we're going to have plenty for dinner as well as leftovers. Now sometimes I like to make just like a really simple meal. It's not going to be too fancy, but it's going to be hearty. It's going to be good. And this is one of those nice, hearty, budget-friendly uh, dinners for the family. So with the large head of cabbage, I'm going to go ahead and chop this up. Now if you are going to, this is going to be enough for definitely six people. But if you're going to be cooking for less than that, you can get a smaller head of cabbage. And go ahead and reduce the recipe down to fit your needs. And this is the size I like to cut my cabbage. I would say it's about the size of say like half of an egg. About half of an egg. It's about that size. Some are going to be a little bit bigger. Some are a little bit smaller but around that size. So once I have my cabbage cut, I'm using a sweet onion. You can use a sweet onion or either you can use a brown onion, you can use a yellow onion. This is actually a sweet yellow onion that I'm using and I'm only going to be using about a quarter of my onion. It's a pretty nice size onion so I'm only going to use about a third to about a quarter of the onion chopped up. Chopped up it's going to be around about three-fourths of a cup of chopped onion. Now in the description box below I will have a list of all the ingredients you need to go ahead and make this sausage and cabbage for you and your family. Now if you are new to my channel welcome in and if you're a returner welcome back. My name is Devon and on my channel I love to share what I cook and bake for my family in my kitchen. Love sharing a story here and there some nice home cooking. So if you enjoy those type of vlogs, I hope you consider subscribing. So after I've chopped my onion, I set that aside and I have this big package of sausage that I have here, but we're only going to be using one piece of the sausage. This is a pound. So if you just buy like at the store, if you go and you have the package and it has just the that that horseshoe shape, that'll be about a pound. And so that's what I'm using. It's about a pound of sausage here. This is the the thickness that I like to have it. Not too thick, not too thin, just right about there. Like maybe if you had a few quarters stacked together, about that thickness, around maybe like three or four quarters stacked together. And so I'm going to go ahead and slice this up. Now depending on the type of sausage that you decide to use for your sausage and cabbage, you may need to put a little bit of olive oil into your pan when you're frying up your sausage because we're going to do a nice little fry, a little sear to our sausage. Now that's usually like if you're using turkey sausage or a chicken sausage if you're using that. And if you don't have any olive oil, you can go ahead and use a little bit of butter. Now not all of my cabbage fit down. Uh, into my bowl of water. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my cabbage really good. We've got our ingredients ready. Let's go ahead and put together our cabbage and sausage. So first what I do is I go ahead and I sear my sausage in my pan. I go ahead and put all my sausage in my pan. I'm using a high sided large pan but you can also use um, a nice pot as well if you want to use a pot. Now like I had mentioned earlier if you're using like turkey sausage that you're using or a chicken sausage. If you need to put a little olive oil or a little bit of butter in your pan to sear them, definitely go ahead and do that. I go ahead and I just saute, move them around. You don't have to worry about uh, getting a sear on every piece of sausage, but if they're mostly seared and on most sides, that's fine. I have my pan on a medium to high heat and it's only going to take about five to seven minutes for me to sear off my sausage. Now once the sausage starts to sear, you're also going to get some nice fawn that's going to build in the bottom of your pan. We want that fawn because that is going to be the flavor that's going to go all throughout our cabbage. So once my sausage is nice and seared, I take those out. Then I go ahead and I put in the chopped onion. We're going to saute the chopped onion. Now if you need a little bit more oil in your pan, you can add some olive oil to your pan to um, saute your onion or either you can add a little bit of butter if you need to as well. Go ahead and saute them just till they start to get soft. Once they start to get soft, 
Then I'm going to add in some chicken broth. You can actually, I'm going to add in chicken stock. You can either use chicken stock or either chicken broth. And I'm going to be using one cup. Now, what you want to do is after you add in your cup of your stock, you want to go ahead and lift that fawn up from the bottom of the pan. That is going to be that wonderful flavor that's going to go all throughout our sausage and our cabbage. Once I've lifted up all the fawn, I'm going to let the onions simmer in my chicken stock for about three to five minutes. Once it comes to a nice simmer, then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add in our cabbage. Now, I have a lot of cabbage and so I'm going to be doing this in two parts. And you might have, depending on the size of your pot, you may not need to do this. Or either, depending on the size of your pot, you may need to do this in three parts. And so I go ahead and I fill it with about half of my cabbage. I just kind of poke and just move everything around. I'm going to put the top on my pan and I'm going to let this cook for a few minutes until the cabbage starts to reduce down and then that way I'm able to put the balance of my cabbage into my pot. Everything is looking good and you can see as also the cabbage starts to cook, it really does shrink down. So you'll start off with a large volume of cabbage but as it cooks it just kind of reduces down as it softens up as well. Also as your cabbage cooks it also releases its nice cabbage juices into the pan as well and so it reduces down it's going to release a little bit of liquid that's also going to come off the cabbage and also you want to move the cooked pieces from the top to the bottom and just kind of rotate. I'm going to go ahead and put the balance of my cabbage into my pan. I'm going to put the top on. I'm going to let it continue to cook. I have my fire on a medium. We're going to come back and check it in a bit just to see how it's doing. Well, y'all, it's been about five to six minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead, rotate the bottom pieces of cabbage with the top pieces so that way everything gets cooked nice and thoroughly and everything gets a chance to be in our nice broth that we are building up into our pan. And we're also doing this because we don't want our cabbage to burn or scorch on the bottom and so we're checking to make sure that we still have plenty of cooking liquid in our pan and also that our cabbage is cooking well but it's not burning and it's not scorching. If you need to add a little bit more of the chicken stock or the chicken broth you can definitely do that in just about a half a cup you know it's good at a time just to have just enough liquid in your pan that it cooks and it steams and sautés well. Well our cabbage has reduced down it is looking really good the juice is in there I could see the onions it is just looking so full of flavor I'm going to go ahead and taste it for tenderness and when it comes to the tenderness or how much texture you want in your cabbage, that is going to be up to you. I like mine with a little bit of bite to it still. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. This is regular black coarse pepper that I'm adding. You can also add a little bit of salt. Not too much because the um, sausage that we're using has a good amount of flavor and seasoning. So we don't actually need to add too much salt to the cabbage. And then the chicken stock we had um, as well also has like some seasoning in it as well. I go ahead and mix in our sausage with our cabbage. And also if you like bell pepper, green bell pepper also works well in this recipe. When you add in, you can use either a half of a bell pepper or full bell pepper. When you add in the onion and you're sauteing the onion, it's a good time to add in some bell pepper. Well, this is my corn fritters that I made with Jiffy corn muffin mix. They come out so good. It's going to go perfect with our dinner. Do you see those little pieces of corn in there I added? In the description box below, I'll put a link to the video on how I make my corn fritters using the box Jiffy corn muffin mix. It is so easy, y'all, and it comes out so good and it's perfect with our dinner tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and add some rice to our plate. This is a very simple dinner, but you know what? It is very filling and we love it. And growing up, my mother often made sausage and cabbage or she made cabbage and with a little bit of meat in the cabbage as well. And she would make sometimes hot water cornbread or she would make regular skillet cornbread and we would just enjoy it. Well, I'm going to give you all the first bite. You ready for your bite? Go ahead and take your bite. Now I'm going to take my bite and see how we did. Mm, mm -hmm. Y'all, this comes out so good. And if you are a fan of white beans or northern beans, white beans, northern beans goes great with this meal.
Well, I hope you give this recipe a try. I'll have all the links in the description box below for you. I'll also add in my recipe for some great white beans. They come out so good. Well, that is it for me today. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you like this video and appreciate the content, show it some love. Give it a thumbs up. Click share. Share this video with a friend or family. And remember, it's always good when Devon is cooking for the family. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.